Omagyantimirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuram Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutaha Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnamamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Satvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamascha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tatta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vranda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Shute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Pancha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Devacha Paditanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Radhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna I'd like to welcome all of you all to today's satsang program. Very grateful to the Desai family, especially Keshav Prabhu, Namamrit Matiji, Maitali Priya Matiji for having invited us here. Um, my Ram Naomi is incomplete without this program uh, at their place. <clears throat> so Matiji has instructed me to speak very deep Ram Katha. So, I am going to attempt that. Hopefully, all of you all will be able to digest, you know, what we are going to go into. Sometimes through the whole session, your head might spin because of the <laughs> analysis that we are going to be doing on the Ramayana. But I guess that's okay. <laughs> and I hope all of you all know the Ramayana well. So, I am not here to tell you all the Ramayana. I am just going to go very deep into the Ramayana, okay? So, all of you all are ready? Yes. So, I am going to be focusing on one personality in the Ramayana through this whole discussion and that's Sugriv. So, we will be going around, you know, many aspects of Sugriv's life, you know, because uh, Sugriv is one person in the Ramayana who is most closest to us. Yes. <laughs> so, there are three, three types of personalities um, in this world. There are materialistic people who are completely materialistic in nature. Then there are people who are sadhakas or who are trying to become devotees, practicing spiritual life. And then there are siddhas. Siddhas are people who have perfected their spiritual life, right? So these are the three types of people, sadhakas, siddhas and materialistic people. So now out of these three, the natural, who is going to reach God? If, if that's the question that is asked, siddhas are already perfected. So they, they the, the greatest chance that they will reach God, right? And then sadhakas, they are trying to perfect their lives. So it's a good chance that they will reach. But a materialistic person, what is the chance that he is going to reach God? It's almost nil, isn't it? But 
if somebody who is a materialistic person reaches God, that's a story that is hopeful for us. So Sugriva falls in that category. He's a complete materialistic person. We study the Ramayana, what all he did, it doesn't have any lakshan, any qualities of a devotee doing all that. But still he reaches, reaches Ram, which means he is the, you know, what do you call it, um, hope for all of us. He is the inspiration for all of us. I mean, the inspiration is not from the point of view that we become materialistic like him, you know. <laughs> but if somebody like him can attain God, then there's a good chance that we might also be able to attain God. So now, um, how does Sugriv attain God? The idea is that Sugriv's attaining Ram is through Hanuman. So now Sugriv's the one qualification that brought Ram and Hanuman uh, and uh, Sugriv close by is that there's one connection. Hanumanji is there in between. And the most amazing thing is that when Sugriv surrenders to Ram and he becomes a Ram Bhakta, he you know Ram accepts him, Hanuman also falls at the feet of Sugriv. So imagine that, you know, if Hanuman is such a great personality, so when um, you know the whole Ramayana gets over and Hanuman wants to stay with Lord Ram in Ayodhya. So now Ram obviously has agreed that Hanuman stays with him in Ayodhya. But what Hanuman does is amazing. Hanuman goes to Sugriv and asks him permission. He actually falls at the feet of Sugriv because Sugriv is his original master or his uh, you know king. He asks him for permission, then comes back. So now, if someone like Hanuman falls at the feet of Sugriv, which means that person has done something substantial, isn't it, to uh, to win even the heart of somebody like Hanumanji? So today we are going to be analyzing what are the things that Sugriv has that we can develop in ourselves. What are the things that Sugriv does which has been able to touch Ram's heart, which has somehow connected him uh, with Lord Ram. So whenever, so Hanuman is, is a personality who is filled with good qualities. He's filled with so many gunas, right? He is a person who is filled with amazing divine qualities. Guna Sagar, you know. He is considered to be like an ocean of good qualities. <coughs> Sugriv is not considered to be an ocean of good qualities. But the problem with being an ocean of good qualities is that there is something called Guna Abhiman that can come along with it. That means you can have pride in having good qualities. You suppose somebody says, I have so many good qualities. <laughs> that's it. That's the, that's the, that's the, that itself becomes an obstacle in you progressing in your spiritual life. But somebody who doesn't have any good qualities, he can't have that at least. He can't have guna Bhiman at least. <laughs> so in one sense, for all of us, the starting point is good. We don't have any good qualities. So at least we can't be proud of you know, having so many good qualities, isn't it? So, the scriptures have a very interesting way of defining and uh, delineating the idea of spirituality and uh, the consciousness with which we can practice spiritual life. The, the Supreme Lord, of the many things that he does, one of the things that he specializes in is in breaking pride. That's his speciality. Lord Ram, when um, he breaks the Shiva Dhanush, he breaks it in between. Lakshman asks Lord Ram, My dear Lord, why did you break the Shiva Dhanush in between? You could have broken it from top, you could have broken it from below, you could have broken it from anywhere. But why specifically you broke it right in between? Lord Ram, he tells him, Look at this. He says, pride is, there is no pride in the beginning of your life. When you are born, are you proud? Birth, there is no proud, pride. In death, there is definitely no pride. When a person is dying, you know, like especially the last phase of life, how can you be proud? There is nothing to be proud, isn't it? All pride is in between only. 
so he broke the bow in between so in the beginning of your life there is no pride in the end of your life there is no pride in between there is a lot of pride and that's why lord ram broke the bow in between so for all of us if you see in our own spiritual journeys when we when we begin our spiritual journeys there is no pride and when we end our spiritual journeys and going back to the spiritual world there is no pride in between there is so much and that's why we need lord ram to come and break our pride in between so when we are practicing uh, spirituality when we start practicing krishna consciousness we also develop a lot of gunas lot of good qualities and devotees also come and appreciate our good qualities isn't it i mean they actually may not be good qualities but somehow devotees appreciate us they find some good quality and appreciate us and we develop guna abhiman for that i mean it's not that the good qualities are there in us somehow devotees find it and they appreciate it and that which is found by some other devotee we become proud of it and therefore we need lord ram to come into our life and keep breaking this whatever little uh, pride that we develop in our hearts so for somebody like sugriv that problem was not there because he didn't have only good qualities so hanuman ji definitely guna abhiman would can be there but he never had it you know he somehow dealt with it but for somebody like sugriv he didn't have it only so that problem is not there so then what is special about sugriv that ram became so attracted to him what is special about sugriv that ram got uh, so connected with him so a lot of people when they practice austerities when they do sadhana when they do um, so many uh, spiritual practices they start thinking that these spiritual uh, qual- uh, these divine qualities that have come in me have come by 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 uh, my efforts i have put in effort i have chanted so many rounds i have done so many austerities i have distributed so many books i have attended so many classes i have done so much seva and by the dint of my effort i have developed these qualities by the dint of my effort i have developed all these qualities but when we look at somebody like sugriv this pride breaks because he didn't do any of that and still he got the mercy of the lord that means you can get the mercy of the lord without doing anything also so it's not just by and and the other side also even if you do so much you can you may not get the mercy of the lord the other side also you know so it's like you if you do so much you may get the mercy of uh, you you may think that you're getting the mercy of the lord by my effort but when you don't do anything you might still feel that you know uh, you might still get the mercy of the lord if you are somebody like sugriv basically so the interesting part about um about lord ram's and hanuman's connection is that if you actually study the connection the uh, the first time ram and hanuman met and ram asks hanuman who are you you know there is a there is a small introduction that happens between them hanuman does not mention his name in that he mentions that i am servant to sugriv later on when ravan asks hanuman who are you that time also hanuman doesn't mention his name he says i am servant of ram the interesting thing is that hanuman doesn't mention about himself at all anywhere you know usually when somebody asks us who are you the first thing we mention is our name isn't it we mention but hanuman he mentions his connections and that's what he feels so true knowledge is to forget your name and only remember the name of god that's what true knowledge is parvati devi one time she asked lord shiva a question she asked him that i see in your you know meditation whenever you are meditating you are completely oblivious to the world but sometimes when you are talking to people when you are having a conversation you are talking to someone i see you developing some ecstatic symptoms especially when they use words that start with r 
Ravan. Anybody develop ecstatic symptom when you say Ravan word, you know? Or Ratha, or Ratna. Any, any, any of these words which start with R, the moment Shivaji hears someone saying a word that starts with R, he starts developing ecstatic symptoms in his body. Tears start coming out, his hands start trembling, his voice starts faltering. Parvati asks him, why? Why do you develop such uh, you know, symptoms when you hear the word, word starting with R? Lord Shiva says, I feel that they are going to say Ram. And because I, I think they are going to say Ram, before they say Ram, I start experiencing you know, all those symptoms. Right? Imagine the, the, uh, the absorption of Lord Shiva. Ram Nam is so amazing and so powerful that when Lord Shiva experiences even the word R from the Ram Nam, he experiences all this, all those ecstasies. So for any devotee, the idea is someday we should forget our name and remember the name of the Lord only. So Hanumanji, you see, look at the way he is practicing. In all the introductions that he is doing, he is not giving, talking about himself only. He is talking about his connection to the Lord. Right? So that's why the, uh, all our Acharyas are giving us the idea of practice. Um, the process of initiation, when you get spiritual diksha, um, you are given a name. So and so das. Why you are given a spiritual name? So that you can forget your material name and focus on the holy name of God. And remember that you are a das of that name, basically. So the idea is, why we are given, I mean, many people have this question, you know, what is this, after initiation, name changes? The, the idea is not to change your name, the idea is to change your identity only. Our identity comes from our name, right? Whatever our name is, that's what our identity is. But when you come to the spiritual uh, practices, when you come to the spiritual path, you know, not only your name is changed, your identity only is changed. Therefore, if you see Hanuman, he never identifies by his name. He identifies himself only as a servant of Ram. That's his primary identity. So Ram, um, when he talks to Hanuman, he asks him, who are you? And Hanuman, he starts feeling that, am I so sinful? Am I such a bad person that Ram has forgotten me? He is asking me, who are you? Now imagine you know, a situation where um, we have to identify ourselves to God. We have to tell who we are to God. So the idea of here, Hanumanji, Hanumanji is feeling really bad. That, you know, worse than, being, worse than forgetting God, he is being forgotten by God. Right? We forgetting God is that's normal. That's, that happens all the time. But imagine a day when God forgets us, you know. So Hanuman was really feeling sad that Ram has forgotten me. He's asking me, who are you? So Hanuman is someone who is constantly thinking of Ram. But in the Kishkinda Kanda of Ramayana, you will find Ram is constantly thinking of Sugriv. Ram doesn't come to find Hanuman to Kishkinda. He comes to find Sugriv. Isn't it? This is just amazing. I mean, we can understand if Ram is coming to find Hanuman. Mm -hmm. Understandable. He is like such a great devotee, worth coming, worth the lot coming to find him. But Ram doesn't even want to find him. He's not looking at looking for Hanuman. He's looking for Sugriv. That's the hope for all of us. Ram comes all the way to the material world to to Sugri, to Kishkinda to find a person who is a loser. Sugriv is a loser, isn't it? He is a loser in every way, if you see, from a practical point of view, from all practical points of view, he is a loser. So that gives us great hope. <laughs> we are also losers. We have lost a lot only. What else is there to lose more, right? We have lost the spiritual world, we have lost everything, we are here in the material world. And the amazing thing, the hope for us is that Ram comes for finding losers only. He's coming to find Sugriv of all people. So, if 
Ram himself is remembering Sugriva, then he must be so respectable, isn't it? So Hanuman is feeling even more amazed that you know Ram is coming uh, to find Sugriva. The Lord has a very interesting way of functioning in this world. He reduces the inferiority of small people and he reduces the superiority of big people. Those who are inferior, he makes them feel less inferior. And those who are superior, he makes them feel less superior. <laughs> so it depends on what we are. If we are feeling inferior, that means you are feeling we are useless. I am good for nothing. Nobody in the world, world needs me. The Lord will help you. He will help you lose the inferiority complex. Because He wants you. And if you think you are great, everybody wants me. The Lord will reduce your, your superiority complex by saying, I don't even need you. So look at this. Ram is looking for Sugriva. He is not asking about Hanuman. Hanuman is such a great person, so many divine qualities. But Ram is not even asking for him. Ram is looking for Sugriva. He is asking Shabari, he is asking Kabanda, he is asking everyone on the road, where is Sugriv, where is Sugriv? If Ram does that to ask about Hanuman, that's understandable. But Hanuman is such a superior person, right? So by asking for Sugriv, simultaneously Ram is helping Hanuman, you know, reduce Hanuman's superiority feeling and simultaneously reducing Sugriv's inferiority feeling. That's the way the Lord functions. So basically, um, if you see, um, the many personalities that Ram met on the way uh, in, uh, in the forest, like say for example, Kevat, who was an insignificant boatman, very, very insignificant, very humble person. Ram helped him but by reducing his inferiority complex, by actually taking his boat, taking help of him, right? And um, Indra, he, he came to Lord Ram to offer his chariot. Ram did not use the chariot of Indra because he is already in a, another level of superior, superiority complex. By not taking his chariot, he reducing his superiority complex. And the same thing here with Sugriva and Vali. Sugriva has nothing and Vali has everything. Logically, Ram should go to Vali and ask for help. He is already king of Kishkinda. Why to kill somebody and make him make another person king and then ask help? All the help that Sugriva gave, Vali also can give, isn't it? All the Vanaras that Sugriva has, Vali also has. But why does Ram not take help of Vali and takes help of Sugriva? Because Ram doesn't need Vali. Because he has, he has a superiority complex. And Ram needs Sugriva because he has an inferiority complex. What does it mean? It means if you think you are great, Ram doesn't need you. If you think you are nothing, he can make you great. Very interesting, right? How, how the Lord functions in this world. The word Sugriva, Griva means neck. And Sugriva means beautiful neck. What is the meaning? I mean, how can a monkey have a beautiful neck? Eh, no? What is the meaning of this beautiful neck? What, what, what is the, the import or the, what is the understanding of the, of the meaning? of Sugriva. It really means someone whose neck is bent in humility. Somebody whose neck is bent in humility, that person is Sugriva. Usually when you are proud, your neck is like, you know, hold your high, head high. That's what it said, right? Hold head high means what? You don't know how to bend. But in spiritual circles, the first thing we are taught is Dandavat. Most people in this world don't offer obeisances on the floor. When you come to ISKCON programs, you are taught, Niche you go. Initially, it's very difficult for the ego to bend down, isn't it? What are they, they telling me to bend down? It's not easy for the ego to bend down. But when you are uh, taught spiritually, this is good for you. When you bend, slowly start learning. That's what the idea of Sugriva means. 
So, um, in the Ramayana, we find many, many names of personalities which are connected with body parts. Like, for example, Shurpanaka, nails. Crazy, isn't it? Sharp nails. Yeah. That's what the name Shurpanaka means. <laughs> Somebody whose nails are very sharp, basically. Kumbhakarna. Somebody whose ears are huge, like a pot or a, you know, um, large ears, it's all. So each of these uh, represents something. Like say, for example, Kumbhakarna represents uh, ahankar or pride. So a person who is very proud, his entire life focuses around his ears only. Why? Because a proud person has to hear about his glorification. Then only he feels good. So the nourishment of a, of a, a person who is proud comes when others glorify him. So therefore, years are big. Years are big means what? There's a, there's a lot of desire to hear about yourself. A lot of desire to hear about your own glory. That's what the word Kumbhakarna means. So he's, it's not about size being big. That's like the symbolic way. Size is a, that's an external thing. But actually the symbolic meaning means somebody whose ears are big. And therefore, um, someone whose ears are big, he can hear a lot. And when you hear a lot about yourself, it's a very intoxicating experience. Isn't it? It's a very intoxicating experience. You love to hear more and more and more. And if nobody is speaking anything about you, you speak more about yourself. <laughs> Therefore, in the Ramayana, when Kumbhakarna is killed, the first thing Sugriva does is bites off his ears. And Kumbhakarna gets so wild when his ears get bitten off. And then he starts shouting all kinds of abusive things from his mouth and starts glorifying himself from his mouth. And Ram shuts his mouth also with arrows. <laughs> That's how pride dies. Pride dies. When you stop hearing about your own glories and you start speaking about your own glories. Stop speaking about your own glories. Instead, you start hearing about the glories of God and start speaking about the glories of God. The more you hear about your own glories and the more you speak about your own glories, there will be more pride that will be, that becomes bigger and bigger and bigger like a mountain. And the only way to destroy that pride is by eliminating the desire to hear and the desire to speak. And interestingly, um, Ram asks Lakshman, you killed so many powerful warriors, why didn't you kill Kumbhakarna? Lakshman killed Indrajit and so many powerful warriors. But when Kumbhakarna came, Lakshman went aside and allowed Ram to kill him. Ram, Lakshman tells Ram, all other demons I can deal with, all other anarthas, I can deal with. But pride only you can deal with. So that means all other things, you know, lust, anger, greed, all that we can deal with, with it ourselves. But pride, you have to allow God only to deal with it. You know why? And in the, the interesting part is, in spiritual life also, you can give up so many things very easily. But the pride that I gave up, you can't give up so easily. Isn't it? That only God can help us give up with that. So everything else we can deal with it ourselves. But when it comes to pride, you move aside and allow Ram to deal with it. So therefore, Lakshman moved aside. And Lakshman is Guru. He knows what to deal with and what he can't deal with. So he stepped aside and allowed Kumbhakarna to deal with pride, basically. So, um, Shurpanaka, as I said, you know, she is the one who has big nails, right? So, now, um, most other organs of our body, we don't cut, do we? We don't cut our intestines, you know. Thoda bada ho gaya. Intestines are become a little big, you know. We don't cut our uh, lungs, you know, expanding too much, you know. We don't cut any of our organs of our body, isn't it? But we cut nails systematically. Regularly we cut nails, isn't it? So, there are some things which are like nails, especially desires are like nails. And nails are useful, you know, but in a limit. 
beyond a certain limit the nail becomes useless you have to cut it isn't it so even if you want to have a decorative nail it's only useful to a certain point beyond that you have to trim it still isn't it so desires are good but when the desires grow beyond a certain point you have to cut them and that's what the idea of a nail cutters are basically so spirituality helps you limit your desires spirituality helps you cut the desires and limit it to a particular level particular extent if it grows beyond that then it becomes dangerous basically but shurpanaka does not believe in cutting nails that's why her name is shurpanaka the one who does not believe in cutting nails that means the one who does not believe in limiting desires basically so um and she lets them fan out fan out so it's called um her shurpanaka means the one who has nails like a winnowing fan basically so um so as far as desires are concerned she knows no limits and she accepts no limits interestingly when um ravan was you know he was having a meeting in his uh, kingdom and somewhere during the meeting he by mistake killed shurpanaka's husband whose name was vidyujit that was shurpanaka's husband after killing him he goes to her his sister and tells her i'm sorry i killed your husband by mistake today <laughs> imagine you know wild guy and then he tells shurpanaka don't worry because i have killed him by mistake i'll give you janasthan you are the queen of janasthan now and i'll give you 14000 soldiers and you can go and rule janasthan she was completely okay with that she forgot her husband she went and and that's why she went to janasthan and she and ravan told her you go there and you can marry anybody she was there searching for her husband by the way you know in janasthan that's when she found ravan lakshman that's the connection basically so shurpanaka is someone who does not believe in limiting desires she feels that i don't have to have any limits on what i or what i want what i aspire for so so each name in the ramayana each of the personalities in the ramayana have a particular significance and and i said these are all connected with body parts like sugriv here is he is he means uh, the one whose neck is bent in humility so sugriv is a character in the ramayana who signifies lack of pride he is not a person who is very proud of himself or his achievements etc you know and vali is characterized by excessive pride both are brothers one brother does not have pride and he is humble and the other brother has too much pride and he is very arrogant basically and um excessive pride is connected with arms with arms because with your arms you can subdue your opponents with your arms you can achieve anything basically right so sugriv he is he is humble his neck is bent and vali is arrogant he is very very proud so and of course the um, the thing about um, now sugriv is lakshman asks ram why did you choose sugriv instead of vali why did you choose sugriv to be your friend of all people ram he he gives a very interesting thought which is which is something that we can think about and meditate on ourselves he says you you think sugriv is weak and vali is strong that's why i asking me this question right but ram says i'll tell you two strengths of sugriv that vali does not have the first strength of sugriv is that sugriv can run faster than vali and vali can't catch him so vali is strong but sugriv can run fast so vali represents pride and sugriv can run faster than pride can catch you so that means you should you know even if you don't have any good qualities at least you should be able to run away from pride wala itna speed mein bhago ki pride you should not be able to catch you that's all so ram says this is the first quality of sugriv he is run he is very fast he runs very fast basically and uh, the second quality of sugriv is that he 
knows how to search for things. He ran all around the world. Then he found out Rishimuk is a place where Wali can't enter. So that means he's, he knows how to search for things. And I need somebody who can search for Sita, isn't it? So therefore, Sugriva is more resourceful to me than Wali. Look at Ram's way of looking at it, isn't it? This guy, fellow, doesn't have any good qualities. He doesn't have any strength. He doesn't have an army also over here, you know. And Ram has found one, two good qualities in him. He runs faster than pride can catch. And he's good in searching for new things. Now for all of us in our own lives, even if you don't have any good quality, can you run faster than pride can catch you? No. That much is also good enough for Ram. <laughs> so he is not bothered about all your other qualities and abilities. He is only looking at one thing. Are you easily caught by pride? That's all. If you are sugriv, that means your neck is bent in humility, there is a good chance that pride won't be able to catch you. Right? So what is Ram looking for in us? He is not looking for your ability to chant nicely. He is not looking for your ability to do a lot of austerities. He is not looking for your ability to study all the scriptures. He is not looking for all the things that can make you proud. What he is looking for? He is looking whether you can escape pride. Because everything else he will give you. All other abilities he will give you. This is one thing you have to figure out yourself. So, uh, Ram tells, um, you know, Lakshman, that this guy is very apt. So, when uh, um, the analysis of a Wali, the way he thinks, is very different from the way Sugriv thinks, basically. Wali, he goes to fight with a demon named Mayavi. And he, um, Sugriv, is, Sugriv and Wali are both running after this demon named Mayavi. So the Mayavi first attacked uh, Kishkinda and he challenged Wali and then when Wali starts fighting with him and defeating him, Mayavi runs away from there and he leads Wali to a cave and Sugri was also chasing uh, along with uh, Wali and Wali enters into a cave but when Sugri was going to enter the cave, Wali tells Sugri you stay outside only, don't come in. Why does Wali not allow Sugri to come in? Because a proud person wants to take credit for all success on his own. If Sugriv comes in, even if he doesn't do anything inside the cave, we can go and tell, I, we both went and fought. <laughs> Isn't it? Later on. Yeah. He doesn't even want Sugriv to get a chance to claim any credit. He just stand outside. Imagine that. Kumbhakarna, when he goes to fight, uh, uh, you know, in the, the battle, Ravan asks Kumbhakarna, how many people you want in the army to go with you? Kumbhakarna says, no one, I will go alone. This is the nature of a person who is proud. Does not want to share credits. So Kumbhakarna goes alone. Wali goes alone. But Sugriv, he sends a team. He, work, he functions you know, in a team spirit, basically. And Sugriv himself doesn't go to search. He sends people. He allows people to take the credit. He allows people to get the, uh, you know, he, and he is okay sharing credit with other people. So, um, imagine if Wali is, um, you know, called by Ram to help him. What Wali will do? He will go and finish off Ravan and come back. All credit of killing Ravan also Wali only will take. He might find Sita, but he will not share credit only, isn't it? So Ram, he doesn't want somebody who can, who is self-sufficient. Because Ram, he, is, he himself is uh, good enough, right? So why will he need somebody? So he's looking for someone who can be in a spirit of cooperation, who can be in a spirit of humility and with a desire to serve. So what attracted Ram to Sugriv is that he knows his capabilities and he notice, knows his limitations. <clears throat> and this itself is a big thing. Somebody who knows capabilities and inabilities. When you know your capabilities and inabilities, that is a very, very big thing that God is looking for in us. And then Sugriv, he joins Ram's team. 
and uh, then ram sends him to fight with wali sugriv goes to wali fights with him like anything gets beaten up badly and comes back and ram tells lakshman garland this fellow somebody who just got beaten up why would you garland him yeah you garland someone who is victorious right come back from a battle with like very successful and victorious so lakshman is wondering why is ram asking him to garland this fellow he just got beaten up and come back i mean have you ever seen somebody who is defeated come back people putting garlands on him you know ram is putting garland on someone who has who is a loser basically <clears throat> so ram asks ram tells uh, lakshman sugriv has lost everything he has lost his wife he has lost his wealth he has lost his respect he has lost everything but the only thing that he has not lost is service of hanuman ji and hanuman is faith personified so someone who has lost everything but has not lost lost faith that person has so much <coughs> and someone who has lost faith but has everything actually has lost every uh, lost something isn't it so wali he has everything but one put one thing that he lost was hanuman Sugriv has lost everything, and the only thing that he has is Hanuman. And therefore, Ram says, "Garland this fellow, because this fellow has faith. And if he has faith, everything else will come into his life." So, <clears throat> the whole idea of uh, Krishna uh, of this, you know, Ram Sugriv and um, you know Hanuman dynamics is there is so much of depth in the way you can connect with God. <clears throat> so if you have good qualities and you know you can receive mercy from the lord in so many ways but if you don't have any good qualities at least one good quality you should have is you have a empty vessel that can receive mercy right but if you have a vessel like say if you have a pot with you the pot is kept like this it can receive lot of you know water rain etc right but if you put a pot upside down what will it receive it can't receive anything so wali is an upside down pot and sugriv is a pot that is ready to receive basically this is the difference between wali and sugriv from ram's perspective lakshman asks ram of the nine process of bhakti there are nine process of bhakti right shravanam hearing chanting vandanam praying atmanivedanam offering yourself to the lord um you know uh, archanam which is worshiping the lord so many of these these are nine limbs of devotional service it's called so lakshman is asking ram of this nine process of bhakti which limb do you see in sugriv of these nine limbs you know which which limb do you see in sugriv ram says i see all nine i see all nine in this person why because he has association of a saintly person like hanuman ji because sugriv has association of a person like hanuman <clears throat> he has everything and bhakti is for someone who is simple hearted and sugriv is simple hearted and why does ram consider sugriv to be simple hearted because he does not hide his faults from us whatever faults he has he openly admits he could have easily covered his faults but he doesn't and therefore he is simple from the beginning to the end he spoke of his failure he spoke about running away he spoke about his weakness getting beaten by wali so he says what can be a bigger proof of the simplicity of sugriv <clears throat> so so he says i know sugriv's character by two things one by him speaking about his incapabilities and second by his constant association with hanuman ji if someone has these two things that person can get god in his life someone is ready to say i have so many faults in me and ready to admit it openly the problem with all of us is that we love to cover our faults we love to say show the world that we don't have faults we love to show the world that we are sorted we are all good people you know everything is nice in my life you know 
everything is very sorted and un unfortunately we don't have the guts to say that i am falling short of so many qualities i am falling short of so many things i am struggling with so many faults that's sugriu's advantage and the best part is not only he has the ability to admit his faults but he also has hanuman ji by his side a saintly person by his side so if you have the combination of these two things the ability to admit your faults and the assertion of a saintly person who doesn't give up on you that's it you're sorted you don't need anything else in your life and another quality of sugriu what ram found i mean look at this look at the series of things that ram is finding in someone who is useless basically you know another very good quality that ram found in sugriu is he is residing in rishimukha mountain he is he has chosen a place where wali can't enter that means he has chosen a place where pride can't enter so what is rishimukha mountain rishimukha mountain the word rishimukha what is the meaning of the word rishimukha rishi means sage and mukha means mouth of a sage right what is the mouth of a sage it's called satsang right when you come to a satsang what happens you hear from the sage's mouth isn't it so rishimukha mountain represents satsang satsang so sugriv sitting in rishimukha mountain means what he is sitting in satsang he is sitting in the association of devotees hearing from the association of devotees basically so now this is the place where pride cannot attack you very interesting satsang is only place where everybody is quiet <laughs> the moment satsang gets over everybody starts speaking isn't it it's amazing isn't it so satsang represents rishimukha mountain rishimukha mountain represents that place where you sit quietly and hear from a sadhu's mouth and the moment you step out of satsang you start speaking and most of the time what do you speak we end up speaking about ourselves only our own glories isn't it and that's what getting out of rishimukha mountain represents so the idea is we should spend as much time as possible on rishimukha mountain like sugri so sugri is spending as much as time as possible from on rishimukha mountain because wali can't enter there so that means pride cannot enter as long as you are in satsang so as long as you are sitting in satsang pride cannot enter your life the moment you get out of satsang pride will enter that means what as much as possible keep hearing you know keep hearing nice katha nice uh, you know uh, nice things that nice satsang that will keep us away from being affected by pride till that time wali cannot come into your life the moment you come down from rishimukha rishimukha mountain then sugri gets the fear that wali can come and kill me so that means it should be the same with us the moment you come down from satsang immediately we should have the fear that wali will come and kill us pride will come and attack us you know unfortunately the problem with us is that we get uncomfortable in satsang and we get very comfortable outside satsang <laughs> out of satsang we feel normal you know and in satsang we feel like restricted you know we feel this is strange you know this is not exactly comfortable zone for us isn't it sugriv felt comfortable in rishimukha mountain he felt safe in rishimukha mountain he felt very very uh, happy in rishimukha mountain and that's what we should all aspire for we should all aspire for a place where we feel safe where we feel that you know this is the place where we can stay away from wali we will not be attacked by wali and that's where we feel uh, sheltered so um the idea of um you know fear like you know if you really see from a from a realistic perspective fear is considered to be bad isn't it and being fearless is considered to be good but in spirituality fear is also good is considered to be a good thing to have like for example in the ramayan you will find the most fearless person is lakshman very very fearless but even he is fearful of god 
even he is fearful of displeasing ram isn't it so um lakshman could face anybody he had no problem in facing all kinds of dangers basically but if ram looked at him once with angry eyes that's all he would become like a mouse literally he would shrink down so much because he couldn't handle displeasing ram so that means the one who had no fear at all still had some fear so spiritually we are supposed to be fearless but at the same time we are also supposed to have some fears and what is the biggest fear that we should have the fear of displeasing god the the fear of displeasing the devotees of god so uh, and 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 who is lakshman lakshman is not an ordinary person he is kala personified he is ananta shesh he is the most powerful personality in the universe he is balaram he is a source of all strength in this world so some so kala time is something we all scared of right as time goes ahead you know as our age progresses there is fear that develops in our hearts right everyone is scared of time but time is scared of ram so sugriv here <clears throat> um when sugriv sees ram coming he starts getting scared and he runs towards hanuman ji so sugriv he does not trust his eyes and he does not trust his ears but he trusts hanuman i mean when we look at you know ram even if we see even, even if ram comes into our life how can we recognize ram ram doesn't come just you know telling announcing that hey i am ram come you know god will come in our life in any way in so many ways so when sugriv saw ram coming into his life he got scared why because he didn't understand whether ram is a friend or an enemy but he trusted hanuman he ran to hanuman so whenever we have any fears in our life there might be situations in our life where it seems that something dangerous is going to happen to us we need a hanuman to tell us that this is ram every opportunity that seems dangerous could be ram only could be god isn't it could be god sent so for us to recognize those opportunities as ram we need a hanuman who is a good uh, so sugriv does not trust his ears and eyes but sugriv trusts hanuman and hanuman has his ability to figure out who is ram and the most amazing thing is that in the in the ramayan we find people who have many eyes and many ears ravan 20 eyes 20 sets so yeah 20 eyes right he had 20 eyes he had and 20 years he had after having 20 eyes and 20 years he still couldn't recognize ram isn't it he can see more right obviously we have 20 eyes you can see more isn't it in spite of having 20 eyes and 20 years how much he would have heard about ram's glories from hanuman ji how much he would have heard of ram's glories from vibhishan he heard so much about ram's glories but he still couldn't figure out that this is god he still couldn't figure out this is an opportunity in fact sita told him so many times take shelter of ram sita told him so many times she told him and she went to the extent of telling him that just take hold ram's hand sita didn't tell ravan hold his feet sita told ravan hold ram's hand and why did sita say don't hold his hand why didn't she tell him to hold his feet because sita was thinking if i tell him to hold ram's feet and if he actually takes my advice seriously and he goes and touches the feet of ram ram will feel bad why because ravan is a king right So Ram will feel bad. Why did Sita tell him to hold my feet? So Sita is so sensitive. You know, she's thinking about what Ram will think, basically. <coughs> And then Sita tells him, "Hold his hand." So Ravan heard so much advice. He heard so much glorification of Ram, but still he didn't understand. He saw Ram's glory with his own eyes, with his twenty eyes. He still didn't understand. Hanuman ji met Ram once. two eyes and heard ram for few seconds that's all not forget hanuman going and meeting him from top only hanuman if you actually see, see the analysis of hanuman ji it's amazing 
from top of the Rishimukh mountain, he could see Ram. He said, this person seems to be dharma personified. From every pore of his body, he seems to be oozing goodness. <coughs> and Hanuman, he tells Sugriv, this person, he seems to be searching for something that he has lost. From so far away, he could see so much. That's what is called na, Dur Drishti, you know. That's what Guru is. Guru is far-sighted. So, from top of the Rishimukha mountain, Hanuman could analyze so much. And he could figure out, this is God. And that's why, Sugriv, he feared everything, he lost everything, but he had one thing, that was Hanuman's association. He himself was not confident. He himself was very scared. But he had one person next to him who could see clearly. He didn't have faith in his own eyes and ears. But he had faith in the eyes and ears of Hanumanji. And that's why the whole idea of <coughs> Sugriv and uh, in Ram's analysis, the way we look at the, the idea of satsang, is very, very powerful. When we look at the Ramayana from this perspective, when we look at the Ramayana from the perspective of um, Sugriv, we realize that incapability is actually a qualification. So whenever at any point in time in your spiritual journeys you feel I'm not able to get taste for chanting. If you feel I'm not able to understand scriptures. If you feel I'm not able to develop any love for God. If you feel I don't have any taste for holy name. That's your capability. That's your qualification. <laughs> if you are incapable, definitely you are in Sugriva category. And if you are incapable and you feel incapable, you feel small, you feel insignificant. That is what Ram is looking for. So many of us, when we lose hope, you know, in, uh, in our abilities, that's when you should realize that you are most welcome to the spiritual world. So when we study the Ramayana in this particular way, <clears throat> and when we understand the, um, the greatness of Sugriv, through these amazing insights and amazing stories, that we just discussed, <clears throat> we realize that you know it's not so bad um, from our point of view. Uh, you know, spirituality is not so difficult, not so impossible, and not so um, out of our scope. Basically, <coughs> let us all meditate on this. You know, Ram Naomi. You know, uh, the next one week is actually the Ramayan week. Navratri is going on such an auspicious time to meditate on um, on the Ramayana. But I would say that let us utilize this particular time to meditate on the qualities of Sugriv. I mean, we usually meditate on Lord Ram, right? Mm -hmm. But I think you know it's it's a good idea to meditate on Sugriv also because uh, he is like our inspiration, right? <laughs> he's uh, he's he's close to uh, who we are, and of course. From Charles Darwin's perspective, we are all coming from monkeys. <laughs> so, in that sense, our mindset also closely resembles, you know, the Vanaras. So, it's a very, very um, good way to meditate on uh, on this particular personality in the Ramayana. <coughs> I'll end by telling you all two very sweet uh, stories of Hanumanji that might, uh, you know, help you all develop your connection with Lord Ram again. <clears throat> One time, Mother Sita was, uh, and Mother Sita and Lord Ram, they were having a conversation. And in that conversation, Sita was telling Ram that Hanuman loves me more. And Ram was telling Sita, no, no, Hanuman loves me more. So they are having like a friendly, you know, argument saying who loves, who Hanuman loves more. So they asked Hanumanji, whom do you love more? Now Hanumanji obviously didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to say anything, he was keeping quiet. So then Sita and Ram, they decided to test him. So Sita tells Hanumanji, get me water. And same time Ram tells Hanumanji, get me my bow. And they are two different directions, you know. And you know they are wondering who whom is he going to first serve? That will prove right his priorities. Hanumanji stands there, extends his hand, 
His hand goes in one direction very far. He gets the water and from another direction he gets the bow. And that's what Hanumanji is. He doesn't, you know, uh, he doesn't want to, you know, he, he loves serving everyone. That's the most important thing. One time, um, Ram, Lakshman, Bharat and Shatrughna and Hanumanji, they were walking in a garden. And while they were having this long walk, Ram gets exhausted at some point. And he decides that I'm going to rest here only. And uh, the moment Ram decides that I'm going to rest here only, immediately the four brothers, they look at Hanumanji, thinking that Hanuman will sit down and offer his lap for Ram to sleep on. Hanumanji is running after squirrels and he's doing something else only. You know? So then, you know, uh, Bharat realizes maybe he's distracted. You know, So Bharat sits down and he puts Ram on his lap and Ram is resting on Bharat's lap. And then obviously Ram is so exhausted, somebody should press the feet of Ram, right? <clears throat> so Lakshman again looks at Hanumanji, you know, thinking that Hanuman would want to press the feet of Ram. Again, Hanumanji is doing something else only. <laughs> so Lakshman sits down and he starts pressing the feet of uh, Lord Ram. And then Shatrugna, he thinks Hanuman would want to press the hand of Ram at least. But Hanuman still seems distracted, he's doing something else. So Shatrugna sits down and he is, you know, massaging the hand of Lord Ram. And suddenly Hanuman comes running and he brings a fan and he's fanning all four of them. You know. <laughs> so he was waiting for all to settle down so that he can serve all four of them, basically. So this is the mood of uh, Hanumanji. He is always in the mood of doing more, serving more, you know, finding opportunities in which he can do, you know, more service for everyone else. So this consciousness that we see in Hanumanji and this consciousness that we see in um, Sugriv is a consciousness that we can all imbibe in ourselves. I'll end with one more story of Hanumanji, a very beautiful story, which is one of my favorite stories, and especially because it's in, uh, we spoke a little bit about Ram Nam. So when Lord Ram and uh, you know the, the Vanar army, they were all leaving for uh, finding Mother Sita, all of them were you know uh, in great ecstasy because Ram met each one of them individually and he gave blessings to each one of them individually so all of them are feeling so touched that ram actually met us he actually blessed us you know <clears throat> but ram was waiting for hanuman and hanuman was nowhere in the vicinity everyone came took blessings from lord ram and everyone left finally hanuman ji comes and ram has been missing hanuman for some time right so he kind of gets into a very playful mood with Hanumanji. So Ram tells Hanumanji, <clears throat> you came so late. I gave all my blessings away. I don't have anything to give you now. Yeah. So he's just trying to see what Hanuman will say. Hanumanji tells him, my dear Lord, I don't want all the big blessings. Give that to everybody else. But give me the smallest thing you have. So Ram says, what is the smallest thing I have? So Hanumanji says, when uh, you met Parashuram, when Lord Ram met Parashuram, they had a discussion. And in that discussion, Ram told Parashuram, the smallest thing I have is my name, Ram. Ram is so, Parashuram and Ram. You know, Ram Nam is so small, right? Compared to Parashu, Parashuram. So he, Ram was telling Parashuram from a very humble spirit, you know, that the smallest thing I have is my name, you know, in that mood. So Hanumanji says, you have given them all the big blessings, give me the smallest thing you have, that is your name. And Lord Ram felt so touched and so uh, pleased with Hanumanji that he embraced Hanumanji. And from that time onwards, the copyright for Ram Nam is with Hanuman. So anytime you chant the name of Ram, it means that we have taken the permission from Hanumanji and we are kind of using Hanumanji's property literally. So let us all in this mood uh, have a very beautiful Ram Bhajan and uh, some Kirtan now. And in this, uh, during the Kirtan, during the Bhajan at this point in time, let us all very intensely meditate on uh, the consciousness with which Sugriv lived his life, the consciousness with which Hanumanji served the consciousness with which all these great personalities uh, you know displayed in the Ramayana 
and let us all uh, try to meditate on these qualities that we just uh, spoke about and hopefully some of it will you know come into our life and hopefully lord ram will bless us with some good qualities thank you very much hare krishna